it's not only Tesla that has lowered the price of their battery storage systems this year, but other competitors have done the same thing. What this means is that whether or not you're in the US, Europe, or Australia, you can save a lot of money if you change what you're doing and the way that you use energy. Here's how you can save around $4,000 per year. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans, the Electric Viking. Australian households in particular that make the shift to all electric energy efficient appliances combined with solar panels, battery storage, and electric vehicles can save around 4,000 per year compared with fossil fueled households that rely on gas appliances and petrol or diesel vehicles. Now, this is the savings on energy. This is not the saving on everything else. I mean, guys, I know I'm talking about Tesla, but it really, there's only really one way to explain this. And that's if you're part of it, there's a Tesla group on Facebook that you should join. The Mileage Club, the Tesla Mileage Club. People post on their, their mileage of their Teslas and they post on their, the, the things they've had to do to maintain their car. About nine out of 10 people have done almost nothing to their cars and they've done hundreds of thousands of miles. I mean, that is just unheard of for a gasoline or diesel powered vehicle, especially modern ones, which seem to have more problems than older ones, more technical and more complicated injectors and all this stuff. You go, in, other, in, in addition to that, the servicing costs, let's look at the servicing costs of a modern gasoline or, or a diesel powered vehicle. If you've got to, if you go and get it done by the manufacturer, I mean, which they want you to do, in some countries you have to do it, you're paying a lot of money that you don't need to do if you're if you're buying an EV. So you're not only saving on energy costs, if you go and get the EV, you're gonna save on maintenance costs. And hey, if you wanna hold an EV, or if you wanna hold it for 15 years and you get sick of the car, you can then just use the battery for energy storage. People are doing it already. A new report from Energy Consumers Australia, or ECA, says that households set to benefit the most from the energy transition dominated by fossil fuels to renewable energy will be those that electrify their heating, cooking, and transport and have energy efficient homes while those who remain on fossil fuels will have escalating bills. Now, I don't actually agree with what they're saying in its entirety. I disagree fundamentally with one of the claims they're making. I'll explain at the end of the video why I disagree with it and why a lot of the, a lot of billionaires even disagree with it as well. Anyhow, the stepping up report based on modeling by the CSIRO and consultancy dynamic analysis shows that by 2030, the average difference in total energy costs, including transport between a typical fossil fueled home and an all electric home in the national electricity market will be about 2,300 US dollars per year. Households that install rooftop solar and a battery will make significant savings. The ECA said, by 2030, a fossil fueled household's average annual fuel costs would be $11,000, while a household that quits gas appliances and switches to EVs would spend $8,000 per year. Installing solar and a battery would provide an additional $1,250 in savings. Now, none of these numbers actually include, none of them include if you're part of a virtual power plant. In most places, it's only a matter of time before you'll be able to have the option of opting in to a virtual power plant. That'll help you pay off everything quicker and save you even more money. By 2050, the difference in annual energy expenditure between a fossil fueled household and an all electric household will be $3,000 per year, plus an extra 1,500 in savings if rooftop solar and battery energy storage is installed. Now, this is very hypothetical. We don't know what the energy prices will be then. And that's my fundamental area with this report that I disagree with. However, while welcoming the projected financial benefits of electrification, ECA Interim Chief Executive Officer Jacqueline Crawshaw said the report highlights that some low-income households, renters, and apartment dwellers may struggle to access these savings. Our research shows, she said, there are savings for consumers after they go all electric, but there are costs and other barriers that make it difficult for some people to do so. Adding that households that face barriers to electrifying their homes need support. We need to make sure that no one is left behind in Australia's energy future and that the last households to electrify are the ones that choose to wait, not those who couldn't afford to do so. PV Magazine Australia says, 
that the ECA is calling for a new national partnership for all three levels of government to coordinate the energy transition for consumers. They said there needs to be a clear national plan for households to go all electric that gives people the information they need to make the transition, provides them with funding and support, and identifies the policy changes needed to ensure no one gets left behind in Australia's energy future. Households make up nearly 25% of energy usage in Australia. The energy transition is not just about wind turbines and solar farms. It's about cars, hot water systems, and stovetops. Now, I fundamentally disagree with one area here. A lot of experts and some very wealthy billionaires predict that the net the cost of electricity will decline rapidly over the next 10 years. And over the next 20 years, they say that by 2040, the cost of electricity will be at near marginal cost, meaning virtually free. They believe that that will happen in almost every country worldwide. Maybe not places in, say, Southeast Asia or Africa, places where there are corrupt governments, possibly not either. But most places, most countries around the world, the cost of energy will be near marginal, meaning in places like Australia, the US and Europe, and probably even in China as well, where they're using an incredible amount of renewables, the cost of electricity will be extremely, extremely low. Now, will it then make sense for you to actually have your own battery energy storage? Well, I don't know, but the cost of battery storage continues to decline. And the, the other thing to remember is you often don't drive your car during the day. A lot of people work from home. We have two cars, one person works from home. In the future, you can just use one of those cars as energy storage. Simply hook that up to your solar panels and during the day, charge it. And essentially, you can massively reduce your cost. Plus, then you could potentially use that car to power your house at nighttime when the sun isn't shining. So there's all different ways of looking at this. There's the marginal cost of energy, as Tony Sieber and Rethink X say that the cost of energy will be near zero within 10 years, more than likely. They say, I believe it'll be maybe a bit longer than that. However, this is all very interesting because what it all means is this the cost of energy will continue to come down. However, you can reduce your costs now, as in immediately, by getting an EV and by getting solar panels. The question of whether or not it makes financial sense for you to get batteries, well, that's a different equation. It really depends on where you live, what your energy usage is, you know, how you operate. There's a whole, a whole range of factors, but solar panels, and EVs make financial sense immediately, as in right now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.